Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Sartre Energy. I'm a future paleontology student who loves teaching and entertaining my viewers through showing them the prehistoric worlds of our planet. In this series, I dive into sharks and their evolution. So if you enjoy, consider sticking around to see more. Let's get on with the video. Hello everybody, welcome back to a brand new Shark Week video! Today, we are back, and either this one or the next one, or I don't know, one of these will probably not come out during Shark Week, or a few of these might not. But we're definitely going to get these out at the start of Shark Week, so we'll see how everything turns out. But as you can see behind me, I've made a lot of progress in building up our aquarium. Uh, we have a much cooler looking building. Uh, we have all the weird bits covered up from the front. This aquarium does look a little weird around the back, but I think it still looks okay. And you're only really going to be seeing it from this angle anyways. So anyways, today we are continuing our progress. Last time we worked on this wing of the aquarium, which is focused on placoderms, which evolved many shark-like features. And I am very, very proud of this section. But today, we're going to continue on the other, other side of the aquarium. All the way over here, where if you remember two episodes ago, we made Nerapisacanthus, the very first known cartilaginous fish, and an Acanthodian, or spiny shark. Today, we're going to see how Creatures like Nerapisacanthus started to diversify and evolve during the Devonian period, the period known as the Age of Fish. So without further ado, let's go through this portal and take a look around. Oh. And welcome to the Devonian Seas. Here in the Devonian, we see the development of reefs, very different than those today, but alas, still reefs. There are algal reefs and primitive coral reefs and sponge reefs and so many other kinds of reefs creating a very diverse ocean environment. And what is that up there? This is the first massive fish to become a predator. This is Dunkleosteus. A little inaccurate, thanks to recent scientific findings, but if you want more on Dunkleosteus, I have a video just for you in the top right corner. Anyways, even though that may be the most or second most well-known thing from the Devonian, that is not what we're here for today. We are here searching, scouring the seas for sharks and their relatives. I found another very big aquatic predator. This right here is the Onchiotis, a jawed osteichthyan. But let's keep scour, and Eastman Ostea is one of my favorites. There's also a variety of cephalopods also diversifying. So I'm seeing a lot of really cool fish swimming around, and other creatures, of course. And over here are the largest surviving members of the Orthocone family, who have certainly lost their former glory, but they're still among them. Alright, and seeing this creature from a distance, even though it looks a little different than our modern sharks, you can immediately tell that is a shark. Let's grab that. This is Cladrosalache. Let's go. And we'll talk more about Cladrosalache when we get back. Our job might be done in the deep sea, but if we want to find more creatures, we need to find shallower water. And here we are, some ways away on the Devonian land. Let's clear up this horrible rain and start exploring. So the land during the Devonian. Since I'm trying to teach you guys about geologic time while I'm doing this, I will tell you that there are some very exciting things on the land of the Devonian, but right now, we are up in the mountains, far away from the waters which life arose from. So all we can find here is trees. Here is an Archaeopteris, one of the first trees, which have now replaced fungi as the giant things to be found on land. Let's get down from these mountains and see what we can find in the lowlands. The Devonian is when freshwater ecosystems start to develop in higher up areas away from the ocean and fish evolve to survive in freshwater environments and brackish environments. But look at this, the beautiful Devonian landscape. If you don't know, this is my favorite time period in prehistoric nature and I'm so excited to explore it today. Arthropods first emerged onto land probably during the Silurian, maybe the Ordovician, and we have some arthropods. We can see some arthropods moving around here. Oh, these are such cool plants. I can't get distracted. We're looking for sharks. In the water, fish have truly taken over the ecosystem, and here on land, fish sort of will start to take over the ecosystem. Uh, it's quite an interesting transition, but if you know anything about tetrapod evolution, you know, creatures with four limbs like us, you'll know that fish came out of the water to take the earliest steps towards their eventual forms. Oh, it just died, but right there was an Ichthyostega, one of the- and there's another one. Ichthyostega here is one of the first amphibians to evolve from fish. 
Eurypterid eggs. Eurypterids, the sea scorpions which had previously dominated the seas, are now starting to fade into obscurity, but they still survive in freshwater environments and brackish environments. It's here during the Devonian period that we see the Jackalopterus, the largest Eurypterid to ever live. But aside from this, and some other large creatures in open waters, Eurypterids are starting to become confined to freshwater environments, where they will soon go extinct in the Carboniferous. And here we found some harvest men, which first show up here in the Devonian and are still around today. They're also known as Daddy Longlegs. Here in the shallow seas of the Devonian, we find ourselves another creature. This is Brocoadmones. We've searched through the depths and the shallows. Now we need to find some brackish water for our last two creatures. All right, and over here, we found the Devonian Dunes. This section with some water by it. And look at this. This right here is Perexis. Very interesting, very munchy, munchy little fish. We're gonna grab one of those. Now we transition from dry climate to wet climate to find the very last one we need to find. You know what, I didn't mean to find these, but <laughs> we did find more chondrichthians because here is Climatius, which is another species of spiny shark, which was considered the first shark for a long time before we made the idea that spiny sharks aren't really sharks and also Climatius is a spiny shark. And we found older fossils of spiny sharks. So, yeah. Oh, and here in the brackish waters, yet another one. Diplocanthids. I think with everything we've grabbed, we're probably good for now. Let's go. Uh, let's get started. So this isn't going to be like the other area, where it's sort of just a big box with two floors, and then you walk out of it. Um, this area is going to be much flatter, and you're going to move out through rooms and large tanks and things like that. It's going to be very cool, but it's going to be very different. So that is how we're, how we're doing the rest of this. All right. Let's get this going. So we fill the outside with reinforced glass here, and then we can decorate the inside and put in this. This is our mixed Devonian um, Acanthodian tank that just shows off the diversity. Because during the Devonian, as you've probably already seen, Acanthodians diversified get you a lot. So yeah, this right here is going to be a brackish water tank filled with mixed acanthodians. I'm so excited. We'll start with the bottom. We'll have red clay and rippled red sand and red sandy dirt. For not really any logical reason, I just am very excited about this. We're going to put some land plants here. Here we go. We already have a tank. So now we put in many types of plants, including uh, this Calamo Phyton, which I, I really, really like the look of barely see in there but i do like the way it looks nonetheless because you will be able to see in there once we get a roof over this area i just thought this would be nice put inside a log all right so now that that's done we're going to put in four very diverse groups of acanthodians for you to look at everything in this devonian chest is what we're dealing with today let's put in these four acanthodians rat and acanthus this little red and black acanthodian which is the one we didn't find while we were out in the wild Diplocanthus, which looks kind of like a Moorish idol, but keep in mind, is actually a cartilaginous fish related to sharks. Broco Edmones is the most unique one. I'll put an image up screen. But I'll put an image on screen. But this is truly an interesting experiment of life with a whole lot of fins on its bottom side. And finally... Oh, wait, you're not supposed to see that one. Never mind. So there is our diverse Devonian uh, spiny shark exhibit. You know what? To make my life easier, we're going to put Climatius right in there. Yep, here's Climatius, previously thought to be the very first shark. Alright, so we have some of our Acanthodian space done. Let's extend the, these walls here. And yeah, we're going to start working on the outside of this building. Which, like the other side, we're going to make pretty and we're going to decorate it. And hide the ugly bits, but yeah. Speaking of which, you never got to see what's in here. It's kind of an anachronistic dinosaur enclosure. And I guess locationistic. We have um, one Huyangosaurus and two Compies just running around in here, and they're not important. You just walk over them, and you don't really even see them when you walk over them. But yep, just walk away. Which leads over here, and we'll soon lead down here and connect to this side. Anyways, that's something we'll do off camera. On camera right now. We're gonna work on this. All right, flash forward quite a bit, and I've pretty much built this entire. Um, section. Uh, we have all the floors in, all the walls in. You can look in, you can see our mixed uh, Acanthodian tank here, and our narrow Pisacanthus tank. Both very, 
very, very, very, very cool. And yeah, I even added a lot of Devonian plants back there. So if you look at it from a distance, there's just a little bit of greenery in the background. We're not going to use this space for anything, so we're going to good use. And if you come down here, this is where we're going to continue with more of the shark lineage. Although it should be known, we are going to do something else here. We're going to start transitioning from what we're doing right now with the center to starting to like build underground. Because, first of all, that means we don't have to conceal it on the land like we've had to do so far. And also, like, I've used plenty of natural lighting, and we don't need to have to keep worrying about using natural lighting, in my opinion. Actually, yeah, we're going to make it more of a graduated staircase, because I don't think it'll look that good if it's just like the way it was before. We have the staircase with stone bricks and diorite on the walls, and at the bottom of the staircase, deep down in the earth, we will make ourselves some shark tanks. Nice. This, this honestly, I really love the way that this whole aquarium is coming together. Alright, and now I've realized some struggles that we might have to deal with when building underground, but I think we'll be fine. And for this whole area, we are just gonna, like, just clear out this whole, like, we're gonna clear out a long way. Again, remember, I'm, all of this is gonna be sculpted, all of this will turn into an actual aquarium, but right now, uh, we're just laying the ground, we're actually, I know, I'll just do this again. Alright, and here we have a tank. I tried to make this one very simple because the undisputed star of this fish tank is Cladosalachi, the very, very first Chondrichthian. I probably used the word Chondrichthian to describe spining sharks, that would be inaccurate. Cladosalachi is considered the first Chondrichthian, and by many scientists to be the first shark because it shares many features with modern sharks. Look at those. Now I'm gonna make my job a little bit easier for myself. I have a lot to do in order to turn this down, this area down here into an actual aquarium building and not an ugly Minecraft cave that's been dug out. Uh, let's put in Stethacanthus right here because this is also very important. Stethacanthus is considered to be the either the ancestor or the stem ancestor of Holocephalians and Lazarus. The two shark groups that are going to split off and diversify separately during the following Carboniferous period. And we'll talk about that next time. But before we do, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and stay tuned. Because the next video that comes out is going to be really, really cool.